Hi guys, welcome back to Flora Fun and Food. My name is Lauren and today we are going to start some seeds indoors. This is March and I'm in zone 6B um, and we're just going to get a nice head start on our outdoor garden this year. Let me show you what I'm going to plant. So the first thing I did was get out all of my seeds and I actually keep my seeds in a photo storage album and I have two of these and it just makes it really easy to store my seed packets and I put a little label on them so I can easily find them. Um, so I pulled out everything that we can start kind of late February, early March. I got a little late on the February ones but they'll be just fine. Um, this is just to give us a head start anyway so as long as we get some seeds in the ground we're gonna have a great year. So, so let me show you what I have picked out to plant today. Here is just my box of mixed flowers. So up first I have some straw flowers. I have different colors like raspberry, peach, apricot, um, and then just like a mixture. These are supposedly really good for dried flowers. Um, and so I'm hoping to grow some and craft with them. So we need to get those started today. Um, I grew this one last year. This is Cleome Red Queen um, and it bloomed. It was really pretty. Um, I'm hoping I can get more than just one plant this year. This is um, Oscar. This was my really large one last year that had the kind of the balloon looking green seed pods. They were really cool. Um, I tried these last year but I don't think my starts took off. Um, this is Gallardia. I believe that's how you say it. And they just they're so vibrant and pretty. I want to try them again. Then I have some globe amaranth. They're just like colorful pom poms. Adjuratum blue planet. I just really liked the color of this one. So we're hoping that this grows this year. And then I have some Orlea flowers. I think that's how you say it from my aunt who grew them really well in Colorado. And so I'm going to give those a try. They're kind of like dainty white flowers. The classic black eyed Susan. We're going to try these again this year. And then I have two different Agastache. I have Lavender Martini and Fragrant Delight Mix. They just looked really pretty and um, I believe you can use them in like drinks and food and things like that. So we're going to try and grow these. And last for the flowers are Dianthus. They just look so cool. They're like spider webby and purple, which is my favorite color. Um, so we're going to try and grow some of these really unique looking flowers. So that's what I'm planning on doing for flowers. Um, I do have some like herbal flowers, but this is more like cut flowers. So the next flower is calendula. Um, you can use these for all sorts of things. So they're kind of a cut flower, but I'm going to use them for other um, like creations. Like you can make balms out of them. You can make all kinds of stuff. So we're going to try some different um, calendula and I have just a few different colors um, and they are supposed to self seed pretty well and I did grow some last year so I'm hoping I get some that have self seeded but we're going to plant some more just in case. And then this is my herbal flowers container which this top one is the one I'm so excited about this year. This is called the toothache plant. It's also called a Szechuan bud um, and one of my favorite channels on YouTube is Sorted Food and they have used these on their channel a couple of times. Apparently you can eat them before you eat something else and it kind of feels like a bumblebee in your mouth. It kind of like makes you salivate, kind of gives your tongue a buzzy feeling, but it accentuates the taste of food and drinks. And so I just thought it was really cool and I wanted to experiment with it. So we're going to grow some toothache plant. Up next, I have two different kinds of chamomile. I have the classic kind of yellow chamomile and then I have the German chamomile, which has got some white flower petals on it. And so um, we're going to try this because again, you can use this for more than just cut flowers. You can make tea, you can make lotions, you can make all kinds of stuff. So, um, and apparently they also self seed and they did not take off for me last year. So I'm going to try really hard this year. Um, I've grown this in the past and it did self seed and I had one self seeded last year cause I didn't plant these last year, but this is borage. Um, it's kind of a, just an herb, but you can put it in lots of things. And finally, Echinacea. This is a really pretty, it's a cone flower. It's just a really pretty cut flower, but it also can be used in like teas and foods and things like that. So these are my herbal flowers we're gonna be planting today. Next up is my herbs. We're gonna plant a ton of herbs this year. My plan is to grow as many herbs as I can because I have a dehydrator and I wanna make my own dried herbs. And even if I have enough, give them away for gifts and things like that. So um, first up is more of like a, a lettuce herb so we won't dry this but this is uh, watercress it's kind of got a radishy flavor to it 
Then I have garlic chives. Chives grow so easily and they reproduce so quickly and so easily. So you always have to have chives and you can actually eat the flowers too. They have a kind of garlicky chive flavor as well. Good old classic parsley, some sage, peppermint, dill, thyme. I have a lot of thyme that has come back every year, so we're just going to add to that bucket. More parsley and more parsley. Then I have an entire container of cilantro because it is my favorite herb unfortunately my husband hates it he thinks it tastes like soap um if you're one of those people let me know i just i'm so curious that it's kind of a love or hate thing so i have all kinds of cilantro it's all basically the same i do have some that i liked to use last year that was more uh heat resistant it's the slow bolting kind and it did better in the summer so i'm going to save these for warmer temperatures and i'll plant the regular one here while it's cooler and i'm gonna get these outside fairly soon because they actually like cooler weather they don't like the heat and then i have an entire container of basil i love basil it's so good and then this is another one from my aunt this is basil lettuce leaf and she said it tastes just like basil but the leaves are huge like lettuce leaves so i'm really excited to try those this has been my personal favorite, these um, emerald towers, the Everleaf emerald towers. They get really tall and they have lots and lots of leaves. Now this packet is empty. I see that now. So it means I saved this because I wanted to get them again. So I'm gonna have to go on the hunt for these, but these will get planted this year because they did so well. I even grew these in a shaded pot on my deck and they did phenomenally. Up next, we have our box of kale seeds. Um, and I'm honestly probably just gonna do a mix so this is already a mix this is frost tolerant um your brassicas like kale and brussels sprouts and cabbage and collard greens and all that are really good to start now so anything that's a brassica or cold weather crop start now so you can earlier harvest so this is a mix it's got all kinds of goodies in it um, but i do have some black magic kale that i really like so we're going to plant some of that specifically and then I just have a bunch of this dwarf blue curled leaf one, um, but we're gonna focus on black magic and this kind of mix just to get a variety. Up next, I have my onion container. Now, I am not going to be growing large onions like Walla Walla's from seed this year. It just didn't work well for me, so I'm gonna do some more research before I try this again. So instead, I went out and bought onion sets. These are so much easier to start anyway. Um, I just grabbed these at Home Depot and these are just large, sweet white onions. Um, and so we'll get these planted out pretty immediately um, and they'll just, they'll be a lot easier for me. So we're gonna stick with those this year, but I am going to grow some different bunching onions um, or green onions because I use them a lot in my cooking. My dad loves them. So we're gonna go big on the green onions this year. And then also in my onion container, I have leek seeds. Now, I thought I killed these. I only had two good starts last year because I just didn't keep them very well watered. I was terrible at it, um, just kind of being lazy. But guys, they grew. I had two giant leeks that I grew and basically didn't do anything to that I was harvesting all the way till I believe November because um, they are frost tolerant. They took all summer to grow, but they were so good. So I'm definitely going to try leeks again this year because again, I use them a lot in cooking in place of onions just for a different texture and flavor. Next up is my tomatillos and ground cherries. These ground cherries did so well last year that I started from seed. So I have a couple of different varieties. So I have the Aunt Molly's variety. I have a pineapple variety. This one was really sweet. Um, I've got the Lowen Family Heirloom and I have New Hanover. These were all super successful last year. Um, and then I have a bunch of different tomatillo varieties. So I have a purple tomatillo, the regular Grande Rio Verde, Gigante Verde, more purple, and there's more ground cherry repeats at the back. So we're gonna do some ground cherries for sure again and some tomatillos. I like to make salsa with the tomatillos and the ground cherries are just a fun, easy snack. Next up is my peppers box. Now, if you remember or saw the video, I did over winter um, all of my pepper plants and they're actually doing pretty well. I've lost about three of them, maybe four. Um, but again, that was me not watering them. My bad. Um, they got a little too dry, but my favorite one that I knew I should have been more careful with was my cherry hot pepper plant. It died and this is my favorite pepper. It's just 
enough spice for me to kind of like hit that craving because I like really spicy things without being too overpowering. So we're definitely going to try and sew these and I'm going to make some extra ones just in case because I really want these to do well this year. I had a few at the end of the season and I was hoping to get a really good jump start with a saved plant and I failed that. So we're going to get these going and hope for the best. And then a lot of these I already have as large plants um, and I'll show you those here in a little bit. But my plan is to have Sugar Rush Peach, Death Spiral. This is a new one to me, Albino Bull Nose. It just looked really interesting. Red Thai Chili. Then I have this Phileas Blue um, and on the back it says Ornamental. So I'm going to have to look that up to make sure I'm not supposed to eat them. I'm not really sure. Uh, this one I got simply because of the name Leviathan Gnarly Scorpion Caramel. I just couldn't say no and it looks spicy. This was a freebie I got. This was the De Teal Pepper. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And then I have this Arroz Con Pollo. Um, this is actually a, a Spanish dish that I had a lot when I studied abroad. It's rice with chicken. Um, so we never really put spicy peppers in it. We always had like sweet red pepper. So I'm gonna have to look these up and see if they're sweeter or spicier, but um, it was interesting. So we're gonna try these. We have the, the Golden Cal Wonder. I have another Death Spiral. Shishito are some of my favorite peppers. I just did a video on how I like to eat those the best. So we're gonna try and grow our own again this year. I believe this is empty, so I'm gonna have to buy some more seeds. Oh, never mind. There's another pack right there. Shishito, habanero, bell peppers, big guy hybrid, yellow banana sweet pepper, large Thai cayenne, dragon cayenne, yellow Hungarian hot, the classic jalapeno, lots of jalapenos. And then that's a duplicate. And then I had these uh, and then Jamaican scotch bonnet. I love scotch bonnet sauce and I think my pepper plant that I saved is still doing well so we'll have to check. And then Tabasco. I know this one is well and healthy in my uh, plant room so we're going to try and make Tabasco sauce this year because I love Tabasco sauce. So we're probably not going to plant a lot of these seeds because I saved those plants over winter. Just took care of them. Kind of picked off the leaves all winter but we'll see what we're missing and plant the ones that we need. Last but not least, I have two boxes of tomatoes. Now, I'm going to have to make some choices here because I don't have enough space to grow every single variety, but I really want some large tomatoes, like slicing tomatoes this year because they just did not do well last year. My cherry tomatoes did, but the big ones just either they never got ripe or they were eaten by animals or I only had like two or three per plant and it was just not a great harvest. So, I'm going to go through these and just kind of see what I have and what looks good and we'll kind of, you know, dwindle it down to a few good choices. So we have a brandy wine. We have Italian heirloom Costelluto Genovese. I'm going to try these again because these actually did grow and they're kind of a fun shape. Then I've got some more heirloom tomatoes, summer feast. We're going to try that. Amish paste tomato. These actually did pretty well. They just didn't grow a ton of them. So it wasn't really enough to make a saw. So if I did these again, I would grow a whole row of them just to do some canning. Um, but for now, we'll skip those this year. Heirloom tomato, black cherry. Um, I like the different color, the purples and stuff. Purple's my favorite. So anything purple, you know, I want to grow. This super sweet 100 hybrid did really well. I had cherry tomatoes all summer from this one. Cherokee purple was another one that did well for me last year. So we're going to try that again. San Marzano, we're going to skip this year. Black Crim was a good one. It did okay. Um, these red and yellow pears actually did fairly well, but since I had so many cherry tomatoes, I'm going to skip these and save room for a bigger variety. The Artesian Bumblebee blend grew quite a few and they were really pretty, so I'm going to try those again this year. Then we have Ace 55. I didn't try that one last year, so we're going to save it for another year. And then I have some extra black crim Cherokee purples. I'm going to try this one. This is ox heart tomato and it's supposed to be really good for caprese salad, which is my favorite kind of salad. And then this is golden Jubilee. We'll skip that for now. Alrighty, so let's go through this other box and see what we have. I may have to dwindle down my choices even more. These two are from my aunt who grew them in 
Colorado. Um, she has tomato glacier bush plant and tomato bush cherry patio choice. So I may try these if I have room. She said they did really well. So I always like to do stuff that I can kind of guarantee is going to do something and not waste my time. So we'll set these on the pile. These were new ones I bought this year. Orange Jazz. They just looked really pretty. And then I don't know if I can believe this picture, but if it is that big, that's someone holding it with two hands. This is the orange accordion tomato. And if they are that big, I will be so happy. If they're half that big, I will be so happy. So we're definitely going to try these. I've got bumblebee again. Beef steak are ones you can buy anywhere. I know they're better when you grow them your own, but I'm going to try something that I just can't buy in the store. Like Rutgers I can get, Roma I can get. Big rainbow we're going to skip for now. Here's another A55 ox heart. Green zebra, I've already got some striped ones. Another golden jubilee. These were orange sun gold cherry tomatoes. Since I already have the 100 one, I'm just going to skip that. More cherry tomatoes, all different kinds. Cherry tomatoes. Delicious. Roma, brandywine pink. Pear beef steak beef steak yeah we've got lots of repeats down here at the bottom beef steak cherry cherry brandy wine cherry yep i just got all the the extras it looks like in this one but we're gonna go through just in case we've got san marzano brandy wine again amish paste tomato so all right now we need to see how many we ended up with in our planting pile so I have 11 here and I have 10 buckets to dedicate to tomatoes. So I'm just going to pull one out that I don't really need. I'm actually going to pull out the black cherry tomatoes because again, I have cherry tomatoes and I want to focus on big ones this year. So here is our pile of tomatoes to plant and hope we get some big ones. So here are my pepper plants that I have overwintered. I've let them start getting leaves because I am going to start hardening them off soon. Uh, hopefully like this one right here is my Tabasco plant and it is massive. This one is really, really healthy. I haven't looked at my labels. Looks like that's my Scotch bonnet. So I do have some like this one here, totally dead. So I've had to throw away a few. Some of them like this is a really healthy jalapeno plant and this one obviously died. So some of them worked, some didn't. This is my cayenne. This one's looking a little rough. So we may just need to try again on some of these, but we'll, we'll at least have a few that are ready to go. One other thing I bought at Home Depot was this broccoli. It just looked really healthy and then I wouldn't have to mess with it. It was like six bucks. So it was like a dollar a plant. It's a little expensive compared to seeds with how many you can get, but the work was already done for me. I'm going to go back and get Brussels sprouts that they had as well. I just forgot to grab them. So these are ready to go. I have them under a grow light and I'm just keeping them watered until it, um, gets nice enough outside to stick them out there. Other crops you could grow right now are like lettuce and spinach. I just don't eat enough of it to use one of my buckets. Um, so I'll just buy it. It's cheap enough whenever I want it. So we're going to skip that, but that's another one you could be planting to get started indoors right now. So to get started, I'm just going to use a seed starting mix. It can be any brand. miracle Grow sometimes has fungus gnats I found, but it'll be fine. It was what Home Depot had. So we're going to use this. And I've already emptied two buckets into this large container and we are going to give it a good watering. Your seed starting mix needs to be nice and watered. You do not want to start with dry seed starting mix because your seeds will not germinate. You don't also want to get it too soggy um, because then they'll, you know, mold and drown and die. But you kind of want to be able to hold clumps together and when you squeeze it, you don't want water to come out, but you do want it to hold its shape and just kind of easily crumble when you move it. So we're going to give it a really good watering and we'll mix it around. Just kind of give it a stir and get it all nice and wetted through. Now it's time to label my containers. Um, I did this last year and it was really helpful. So I'm going to take off last year's label. And we're going to add a new one. I like to use washi tape because you can get it in fun colors, but also it um, comes off really easily. So I know these bigger ones I'm going to plant my peppers in because they need a lot of space to grow. 
And after looking through my peppers in my plant room, I kind of know which ones I need. So for sure, we're gonna do cherry hots. And I also want sugar rush peach, which didn't make it unfortunately also. For this one, I'm gonna do my really spicy ones, the death spiral and the Leviathan ones. So now I have my containers labeled, and so now it's time to get the soil packed into it and plant our seeds. So looking at my soil mix and feeling it, it's not holding its shape together yet, but it's also not leaking water out, so it needs just a little bit more water. You do wanna make sure that you start your soil off right or you're not gonna have as much success with your seed starts. So I just got some more water and we're just gonna pour some more in. If you get it too wet, no worries. Just add another bag of drier soil and mix it together. You can always fix it, but if it's too wet, don't use it. If it's too dry, don't use it either. So make sure you get the right consistency before you start. So again, I'm gonna give it a nice good mix. It's starting to really look better and more like the consistency that we want. And this is one of my favorite tools. This is just a coal scoop that I use for this purpose alone. Um, and it's just really handy to have such a big, not sharp, you know, kind of trowel. Um, and it just makes life so much easier. So now if I grab a handful of soil, if you can watch, it's like leaking out water, but that's because I haven't let it soak up yet because it was really, really dry. So if I grab this from over here and squeeze, it's still like powder. So we're gonna give it some more time to mix and just kind of absorb and then it should be ready to go. So it's been a little bit. So now when I clump this together, it doesn't leak out, but it also breaks off in really large chunks and it'll hold its shape if I keep it squeezed. So that is the consistency we want for our seed starting mix. So I'm just gonna take my container and just roughly squish soil into it now you do want to make sure that you pack the soil down because there's a lot of air when you kind of have loose soil and if you have air pockets your seeds are not going to germinate so don't pack it in you know so tight that it turns into a brick but you do want to make sure it's nice and full and firm i also like to take out any large wood chip chunks that i might find because that's not gonna help your seedlings start. All right, to plant our seeds, I just like to use a dibber or this is just a chopstick because I can't find my dibber. And I'm just gonna poke a small hole in the middle of each cell, just about a quarter of an inch down, not very deep at all. You don't wanna suffocate it or not let it get to the light very quickly. Oh, and I feel something large. Yeah, there's a big wood chip in there, so. I'm gonna repack it and re-dib it. There we go. So this one is banana and shishito. So I'll start off with my banana peppers. So here are my banana pepper seeds. Now I'm only gonna put two seeds per hole because I'm gonna let the strongest one survive and I'm gonna weed out the weaker one once they grow to be a couple of inches tall. You cannot keep them even if they both look healthy you need to pull one of them otherwise they're going to suffocate each other out and both of them are going to die so i like to do two or three max per hole get that one down in there and then i'm just gonna lightly close up the hole and i am going to use this spray bottle to just kind of water them in a bit just to give them a soaking to get started but I don't want to overwater it because my soil is already wet but that'll get it going so now it's on to the shitos and same deal two seeds per hole and we'll just keep an eye on them um, I am going to put these on a heat mat peppers and tomatoes like heat and so they'll germinate a little bit quicker if you use a heat mat but you don't have to it's just going to speed up the germination process if you do but once they sprout you need to take them off of the heat mat otherwise they're going to either burn the roots or dry out too quickly and it wouldn't be good. So only keep them on the heat mat until you have little tiny seedlings, okay? And again, I'm gonna spray just to kind of water them in. And then another optional thing to do to give it just a little bit of a boost 
is to cover the seeds with saran wrap to kind of act like a little mini greenhouse just until they start sprouting. Once they sprout, take this off because it doesn't need the humidity dome anymore and you'll end up getting mold and killing off your plants. So now the final step is to get our seed tray onto a heat mat and under a grow light. Now, my issue with this is I have my grow lights secured to each shelf top. Um, so I'm gonna have to use ice cream buckets or trays or something. I'm not gonna keep this here because it's my seeds, but just to show you, you really want your seed tray to be about two inches from your grow light. Plants need to be very close to the grow light for it to have any effect at all. So. Um, I'm going to raise the heat mat, put it on a platform, and get these seed trays up close to the light. And then when they sprout, take this off, keep them watered, and then I'll just kind of lower the platform as they grow taller. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and head over to my channel to subscribe for more content like this. And I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.